Good evening, gentlemen. I hope you guys are doing well. Today's episode, tonight's episode, we will be fitting sleepovers in the KU70. We'll be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to uh, install it. So yeah, stay tuned. Obviously, we're just going to be loosening the wheel first. And then followed by jacking up the car in a suitable spot because uh, some people don't know where to jack the car up. Some people jack it up on the soles of the car, damaging it because uh, each car has a designated spot where it is being jacked up. So the wheel is off. Um, well, we have to loosen this and that and what else? Probably this as well. So let's get to it. And obviously, be loosening on top here. This is this holds your 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 shock mounting place. So we'll be taking this off, taking the whole shock out because it'll be much easier to work like that. Also, please do note this is just our way of doing things. Not saying it's the correct way that we're doing it. Um, this is my first time working on this car suspension, so I'm not exactly 100% sure of how it works, but I'll be figuring it out as we go along. So yeah, so just bear in mind, not saying this is the correct way, but this is just, I'm just sharing how I'm doing it. So this here is a 19 socket, I can't find my 19 socket, so we'll be using a wheel spanner because on the wheel spanner there's a 19 socket. And because this thing is so tight, we have to take a vice grip and clamp it to the stroke of the shock to keep this in place while we turn it loose on top. So I went, my turn it. Was uh, okay, right? So that is loose. So now we can uh, move on to the next step. Um, we need to loosen this one. So we remove the two bottom bolts that keep the strap in place, or rather the shock housing. Yeah, no, what can I do? Very long, very Huh? Yeah. What? Yeah. So the brake line would have to be loosened somewhere at the top or the bottom. Why can't we just bend this bone? Open. Mm. Get it open. Here we go. Nice. Yes, that's a be all if you want to re bleed the brakes. So there's two bolts at the bottom. Seems like intense. Oh, so there's two of these. Whoa! Some tension on the spring. Now, what must I do is now? <laughs> so, oh, is it? I'm not even supposed to be here. Huh? You're the brave one. More power, baby. Did I just fart? I don't know. Did you? I think I just... I... <laughs> <laughs> That's him who's gonna break it for this. <laughs> 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 yes! Ta-da! Yeah, the break, be careful the break line. <laughs> Ah! Yeah, don't be wild, eh? How oh, the are we gonna loosen this bomb? The sleeve is not gonna go over this nut. What is the nut there for? Us to remove the shock. This is the insert. The shocks is my rule to. While we're at it, are we gonna replace the shocks? Pass the sleeve here. It's not gonna go over this bomb. Ah! Well, I the lighting is not cool for the... Let's keep it from a distance. So this here is a holder, basically. To keep the shock inside here. Yeah? As you guys can see, the shock is... You get two types of shocks, the one shock, you press it and it pops back up. And the other one moves slowly up or down. Like if it moves too easy, it's easy as more too. So. Yeah, it's not moving anyway. How the hell are we gonna get this ball out? You probably put the nut on here, see there? Is it moving down, sagging? That's a completely clear, but yeah. Nice. So on the sleeve over, you can put it in this way or that way. 
That's why the thread goes all the way to the bottom. Now, so that is the one we're going to use. So obviously, we want to get the lowest lows possible. Uh, inside diameter of this is 51.5 millimeters. Coincidentally, the outside diameter of this year's shock, uh, shock housing is 50 mil. So it's a 0.5 mil play that we have that you see there. 0.25 aside. So um, normally we would use uh, the O-rings in between. That's the O-rings for him. In your bag uh, of O-rings, that's why there's different sizes because obviously you will find shocks being different diameters and then this would sit in between over the shock and on the inside of the sleeve over. I just want to show you guys here. But in this case, there is no gap. So the O-rings is pointless and you'll have your little and stay. And you'll have your little grub screws. Now the misconception here is that the grub screws keep the sleeves in place. No, it does not. That is the for the weight. The only thing the grub screws do is prevent the sleeve from turning. When you turn in the the the, the what, do you, what do you call this thing? The collars. Collars, exactly what you call the collars. Mm. Anyway, the grub screws, you can see it's a sharpen point. All it does is it will apply pressure on the shock itself. So that when you turn the collars, the sleeve itself don't turn along with that. But Nora will be showing that at the later stage. So yeah, that is your sleeve over over the shock. So as you guys can see there, that's how low it can go. Where's the springs? So your spring goes over. So there you guys have it. <laughs> so up is higher and down is lower. The reason for there being two is when you lock these two in place, nah, then it won't shift. It won't go up or down, so you will lock it. Hence why you'll find these two spanners in the box. So that's basically it. So that replaces your... Where's the spring? The spring. <laughs> As you guys can so see there. It's a difference. A more difference. This here is a 235 pound spring. It does drive, drive harder, but also it supports more weight, whereas the 195 is a little bit thinner. Uh, normally we put the 195 in front and the 235 at the back, but uh, because we're probably going to have a... This car isn't made for comfort, spinning purposes. <laughs> So we're gonna opt for the thicker spring and we don't wanna, we're not into getting super lows, no? Yeah, your 195 pound will give you better lows, but we're not too interested in getting super lows. Yeah, just for like a stiff handling. That's why we're opting for this here. Where is the top? Let's see if it will fit there. Okay, so that will not fit there. So we will need... Actually, it sits nice inside. So we can use the cup, we don't have to use the so cup that's provided with that. So we don't have to use the cups that's provided. Yeah, and still. You can still see it as a nice What's that? There you go. That's a nice foot. Nice snap foot. Ice coin, So we don't have to draw over here. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, Kiko, you want to cups for me? This is the standard uh, top isolator that is provided. Comes with this little washer on top. And this, unfortunately, the quality of it is not too dope. But there is another video where we explain that we do machine this out of mild steel, which is a way better material. There has been videos posted of these cracking. It does crack. Uh, that's probably the only part that is a rather inferior quality. Lucas, this is budget lows. Can't expect much for the price. I mean, 1,450 rand. That's the price we're selling it at. Um, we do fabricate the metal ones. No, it is a optional extra. We machine it for 150 and we sell it for 150 as well. So the choice is yours, but we do inform our customers before and that do be wary of these. We do have a way out though. So you would basically just drill that out, that diameter. So it can actually go. Uh, so it can actually go over here. As you guys can see, they need to drill it bigger. Obviously, it goes without saying we can't provide we can't cut it for you to size and obviously it has to be smaller to accommodate smaller um, shocks where this part is thinner so smaller so you have to drill it out but uh, in our case we do not need that as we just saw that the spring actually seats quite snug in there it's a perfect fit so if your top isolator does not accommodate the spring it will be moving about and it's going to cause a rattling no? so then you will have to opt for the ones that is provided along with the sleeve over kit to have a snug fit so that rattling sound is most of the times it is these no so uh 
over to load them. Yeah, because the shock is now finished with its life, uh, we have to somehow get the stroke back up so we can grab it on top. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, right, so the sleeve is in. Um, as you guys can see there, we didn't put the grab screws in because, uh, yeah, I'm still worried about that. So yeah, we're just gonna tighten it up here on top and then put the nuts back in here because it is loose, as you guys can see. Um, here's bolt one and bolt two, so yeah. Funny is gonna tighten it up here for us, for the boys. So this is our first ride of the eve, the day after we installed the sleepovers. Honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. How's it, how's it, guys? Uh, we on our way to the guy that uh, is going to do our welding. Temba, shout out to Temba. I think he's on Zimbabwe. Not sure, he's not from South Africa, though, eh? Super cool dude. Uh, he did uh, my Bucky, he did the escort we had, and I was going to do the tail test. Shout out to Temba. We all about uh, promoting, you know, small businesses. Small businesses? Ooh, turning with a lock up. Uh. 